I've been writing songs since I'm 13. I can't help but wonder what it is about songs. What, what are they? Why are we driven to write them? I made a documentary that is now a digital series. It's a digital series with an analog heart. It's called Platinum Rush. Welcome to this episode of Platinum Rush. We are going to look at career lows. When you think what could be worse than having success, I'll tell you what's worse than having success is not having it anymore. Uh, every time I got a record deal, it felt I had someone else believing in me enough. Between my second and third records, I went from a teenager with a record deal to waiting on tables and knocking on doors for five years. I made a record on Dave Gilmore's boat which he even played on, and having my manager change jobs and my record company having a corporate reshuffle, I got dropped, uh, and I did not own any of the masters, and the record was never released. It all disappeared into that big black vault that so many artists experience when they're signed to record deals. Uh, then when I finished my record for DreamWorks, they didn't release it for two years after we delivered it, which was very difficult for me to then wait and then be promoting something that I had made almost three years earlier. Finding out my stock wasn't high enough to have them give their time and attention uh, to me at a time when I most needed it. We got to not only play the Nobel Peace Prize um, concert, we got to attend the ceremony because Herbie was very active in like the UN and he, he was invited to go and he said, I'll go but can my band come with me? I was just literally in the room with people who have, you know, changed the world, and now I'm kind of right back in this place where I have no idea how I'm gonna just make it to tomorrow. For me, I guess that was like the best and the worst day. I want to start keeping track of how many beds, different beds I sleep in in a year and how many different truck stops I go to the bathroom in. <laughs> yeah. I went into a hotel room one night at like 1 a.m. and I was at the sink, I was exhausted, I was brushing my teeth. And I looked over and there were three cups turned over like on the counter and there was a wasp under each cup. I went to a music school before I came to America and the only thing they'd let us sing was ABBA songs. And that was it. And not only that, that would be a little strange in itself, but then I lost my voice. I was a heavy smoker and I lost my voice just before I went on stage. And so in front of the entire school, I, my voice cracked. It was just, it was awful. It was the worst performance I've ever given. And I did that thing where you start in one register and then your voice cracks and you go down to the And I was singing a duet. And then the worst bit was that after the show, um, all the people in the school who I had seen around but had never seen me play thought that that was how I sang. So they came up and were like, oh, good job. And I was like, fuck you. I remember being excited, my band's kicking butt, let's go out to Colorado and they'll get to see it, what we do. And I remember we got there and played in this crappy place and the sound was horrible and the band sounded, you know, the things were feeding back and there was 16 people there and most of them were drinking and ignoring us and you know, nobody knew us in Colorado at our first time there. And so and my parents came to see that and then I remember my parents, somebody slashed their tires in the parking lot and and uh, it was just, I just remember just being, to, to have your parents see it, it was the, the worst. Please dig a grave for me, mister. And one for my so-called friend If your back should get sore And you can't think no more Feel free to jump right on in Cause we're all gonna go But nobody knows Exactly where or when So dig two graves for me, mister I came to America on the biggest record company in the world, on Columbia Records, and gradually made my way down to the smallest record company in the world, and then that actually dissolved, so now, you know, it's just me. I wrote a song, and it was a country single 
for a new artist at the time named Kelly Coffey, and it was called When You Lie Next to Me. She ended up getting nominated that year for an ACM for the best female vocalist, uh, best new female vocalist of the year. And, you know, this was a big deal for me. This was my dream. I mean, as a kid, I would watch those award shows by myself in my bedroom with the door locked because it was so important to me. And I think because a part of me felt like those are my people. One day, that could be me. No one offered me a ticket to the show. If I wanted to go, it was gonna cost me 500 bucks. This year's top new female vocalist is... And there was my song playing on the stage. Kelly, Kelly Coffey! As she walked up to receive this award. And it lasted 30 seconds. And it was over. And that was my big moment and I'd missed it. It doesn't mean anything unless you're present for it. And I think I, I just wasn't present. Like, I just felt alone. I felt like, is the, this isn't my moment. This is RCA's moment. This, this is Warner Chapel's moment. This, why isn't this mine? I want to keep it simple. I want to make it clear. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Platinum Rush, The Lows. And next week, we are going to end this series with reflections, an overview. I don't